Hello, I am Professor Harry Fleckner of the University of Pittsburgh School of Law, and I wanted to take a couple of minutes today to talk to you about the late, great John E. Murray, Jr. John served as on the uh, Pitt Law faculty. He served as dean of the law school. He served as distinguished University of Pittsburgh professor of law, all this before he became president and then chancellor of Duquesne University. It was my extraordinarily, extraordinary good fortune that my career was intertwined with John's. He was a mentor, colleague, co-author, and most of all, a friend to me. That's why I'm honored by the opportunity to talk to you today, at least briefly, about John's life his, and his extraordinary career. John was simply a giant in the scholarship of contracts and general commercial law. That's my field of specialization. And John was also a giant in higher education in the United States, as well as a figure of extraordinary prominence and importance in the community life of this part of the country. It would take a very long time indeed to list John's accomplishments in these fields, even superficially. <clears throat> and I will not try it. Instead, I thought I would discuss uh, one specific area of legal scholarship and education on which John was a leading national authority and one that may suggest some of the characteristics of John's accomplishments and impact. The small area to which I want to focus is in fact one of the most important and intractable issues that has confronted contract law in the 20th and 21st centuries, the issues surrounding the so-called battle of the forms. Those of you who received a legal education at any institution in this country, and my guess is pretty much anywhere in the world, may have experienced a small involuntary shudder when you heard those words. It is a rite of passage in U.S. legal education to confront this issue and the extremely complex legal response it has generated. The background, of course, is that when parties began to contract for goods using forms prepared for repeated use with pre-printed boilerplate terms designed to benefit the party who drafted the form, traditional contract formation rules, rules that were developed during the pre-form period, yielded arbitrary and nonsensical results. The drafters of Article II of the Uniform Commercial Code, which became the sales law of all U.S. states except Louisiana, attempted to correct this situation in the now infamous, infamous Section 2207 of the UCC. Section 2207 was, in Professor Murray's opinion, a brave and creative attempt to discover an appropriate, excuse me, appropriate regime for dealing with battle of the forms issues. It was also, in his view, and in the view of most others, including most of those who drafted it, very flawed in execution. These problems were in Professor Murray's assessment, compounded by judicial interpretation that ignored the premises and purposes of Section 2207. He was particularly unimpressed with a line of decisions that made application of the provision turn entirely on the inclusion in a form of certain pre-printed boilerplate language, even though Section 2207 was founded on the insight that such pre-printed boilerplate was seldom read and should not dictate the legal analysis. Nevertheless, whether or not he agreed with it, John was completely clear in his understanding of the prevailing interpretation of Section 2207. John's scholarship on Section 2207 is remarkable for that, for the creating and then maintaining a multi-layered understanding of the UCC provision, even though the different layers could sometimes lead in different directions. He appreciated the bravery and creativity of the UCC drafters' efforts to address the Battle of the Forms issue, even while dissecting the grave flaws in their execution. He clearly demarked where the impact of the problematic statutory language stopped and the effect of misguided judicial application picked up. He offered clear yet sophisticated alternative statutory language for dealing with the battle, drafting suggestions that unfortunately have not been taken up, as well as creative alternative approaches to interpreting the current provision. At the same, same time, he maintained a complete and thorough understanding of existing reality. And he did all this, remember, as just one small element in his vastly larger uh, project to understand and improve contract law and indeed all of commercial law in general. John's wonderful achievements as a scholar are just one element in an extraordinary academic career. He, his work in the classroom was also remarkable. 
and his teaching of UCC Section 2207 once again illustrates his ability to work on multiple levels. For John was able to take his multi-layered analysis of the complexities of UCC 2207 into the classroom and convey it even to beginning law students. He pulled and inspired students in contracts and sales classes just as he pulled and inspired me to a level of understanding of the, of the provision and many others to which most teachers of contract law could only aspire. This approach to and standard of teaching conveyed to students not just comprehension of one of the most challenging subjects of commercial law, but also deeper and more far-reaching lessons about the nature of law and what it means to be a professional in the field. Yes, John was an amazing teacher. I need hardly say that to anyone who is watching today who was in one of John's classes. I constantly run into Pitt Law alums who rave about their experience in John's classes. His prowess in the classroom was due not only to his mastery of the law, and of course, the striking personal presence that all who met him can testify to, but also to his absolute devotion to teaching. Even when he was president of Duquesne, he insisted on continuing to teach, sometimes shouldering almost a full-time faculty member's load, all the while continue to offering, uh, continuing to offer frequent continuing legal education programs and, of course, you know, presiding over a major university on the side. Running a great and complex university like Duquesne, Duquesne was enough to keep even John occupied during the day, so he taught in Duquesne's evening division. As he served as Duquesne's president and continued to have a teaching load, he also maintained a remarkable scholarly productivity with a snowstorm of books, articles, reviews, and other commentary. How he managed this is a mystery to me. How he did it while always looking well rela rested, relaxed, and in good humor was a miracle. Of course, in addition to fashioning a remarkable career as a teacher and scholar, Don did just a couple of other things including being a transformative dean of Pitt Law, a transformative president of Duquesne University, and a leader who made remarkable contributions to the general community life in this part of the country. In short, John was a great multitasker, and it was the quality of mind that he showed in analyzing and teaching something like UCC Section 2207 that made that possible. All the diverse elements of John's career, his roles as a scholar, a teacher, an educational administrator, a community leader. He could keep all those going at an extraordinarily high level because to him they were just parts of a whole, distinct but connected layers in John's understanding of life and his role in it. Thus it was just an extension of his role as a scholar and teacher to become an academic administrator and community leader who made it possible for thousands upon thousands of others to deepen their understanding of important subjects and then to share that understanding with others. I was one of those many thousands who was the beneficiary of John's mind, vision, and energy. And in my case, I received that benefit in a particularly direct and personal way. Early in my career at Pitt, John took me under his wing and mentored me while treating me as a colleague every bit as equal, which of course I was not. We spent hours in his office talking about commercial law and teaching, and that transformed my career. And then he offered to work with me as a co-author, and it again transformed my career. John changed the lives of many thousands, but few were lucky enough to have that change delivered with a personal touch from a friend. I couldn't have been more fortunate in that regard. Everyone in this part of the country, and those of us at Pitt Law in particular, owe a very large debt of gratitude to John. He improved and enriched all our lives, and created conditions critical to our accomplishments. For few beyond his family is that more true than for me. I am so very sorry that he is gone and so very grateful that he was here. Thank you. <laughs>